Good morning, friends, and happy Sunday. I'm so glad to see you all here this morning. Um, I guess since I'm seeing your faces, everybody survived the cold and the snow and the ice. Boy, that was really crazy, wasn't it? The snow is super pretty to look at, but that ice was treacherous. And so many of our friends lost power and they were without heat and even water. So um, I'm hoping that today when the snow melts and the ice melts, that we can get back to normal. But anyway, I'm glad to see you here today. Now, you'll notice that I am wearing my big church clothes today, and I am because I want you to see that today we are moving into a new season in the church year. Last week, my soul was green, and that's for ordinary time. This week, we've changed our stoles and all the pyramids in big church to purple because purple is the color of Lent, and that's the new season that we're moving into. So we got a little taste of that on Ash Wednesday when we talked about um, getting our ashes on our forehead and how um, we all came from dust and to dust we're going to return. But um, God loves us so much and we're so precious and dear to him. Um, and God wants us to live a life that is pleasing to God. Lent is an opportunity for us to kind of check in with God and see how we're doing. So we're going to go back to our little mouse friend here and we're going to let him tell us how he celebrates Lent in his church. Let's see what he says. All right, you know what? I'll let y'all look at the picture here while I read the story. Now, this is a picture of his congregation and they are worshiping. Um, looks like to me right now they're praying because a lot of them have their eyes closed. So prayer is a big part of Lent. Let's hear what the story says. Okay, it's a new season in the church year called Lent. We are waiting again, but this time we are waiting for Easter. We're kind of like Advent. We were waiting for Christmas. That's the season before Christmas, and it's a time of preparation. So is Lent, but we're not waiting for Christmas this time. We're waiting for Easter and to celebrate the resurrection. Okay, we will have to wait for 40 days. That's how long Lent is. While we wait, we will remember the promises that we made to God on Ash Wednesday and we will try to change our ways. Do you remember your promise? Remember, friends, we talked about how Lent is a time to repent of our sin, to just uh, make better choices and turn around and start following Jesus. So that's what he's talking about. Jesus waited in the wilderness once for 40 days without eating or drinking anything. Wow, friends, I get hungry if I miss one meal. Woo. He prayed to God the whole time. He was tempted by the devil to give up, but Jesus did not give up. We must try very hard not to give up, too. Everyone seems quieter during Lent. Everyone thinks and everyone prays. When I pray, I talk softly to God in my mind. Sometimes I talk out loud. Sometimes I thank God for the things that he's given me. And sometimes I ask God to be with me or with other people who are lonely or afraid. During Lent, I always ask God to help me keep my promises. And that's a promise to walk in the ways of Jesus. Sometimes I write letters to God or draw pictures for God. Even the songs that we sing in church are prayers. Did y'all know that? You know, we're United Methodist and um, John Wesley founded the United Methodist Church um, to follow Jesus in a way that was more methodical. <laughs> well, his brother, Charles Wesley, wrote a lot of our hymns that we sing, and they are prayers to God. Our pastor says that praying isn't just for church, and he's right. We can pray at home, at school, before meals, at bedtime, and even on our way to soccer practice. The Bible says pray at all times because God is listening. Friends, that is so true. God is listening. You know, when I think about Lent, um, there's a word that comes to my mind, and we're going to talk about that word today. As a matter of fact, we're going to talk about that word throughout Lent, and that word is reflection. Lent is a time for us to stop what we're doing, pause, and reflect on our lives. Now, you might say, well, how do I do that? What does it mean to reflect on your life? Well, several years ago, um, I had a teacher when I went back to school, um, to seminary, to be a pastor. Her name was Mary Tumulty. And she taught me a practice that um, has stayed with me all these years. And it's um, a prayer journal. Now, I made this today, just ordinary paper, 
Um, I took some purple paper to make the cover because, like we said, purple is the color for Lent, and this is going to be my Lenten prayer journal, kind of like our prayer wall that we had up, but this is going to be a journal, and we're going to ask ourselves a different set of questions. So what I did was I took some plain paper, y'all can use notebook paper if you want to, and I cut it in half, just eight and a half by 11 paper, and I cut it in half, and then I made some holes here and tied a little string so that I can keep all of my thoughts together. Now, because this is my Lenten journal, I'm going to write on it the word Lent. And you know what I think I'll do too? I think I will uh, put the date on it. So this is Lent 20, whoops, 21. Okay? So this is what I'm doing. Now you can decorate your journal any way you want. You can even buy a journal. Um, I know they have them at Walmart in the dollar store for like 99 cents. So if you want to do that, you sure could. But what's important is what we're going to do inside this journal. And I want to keep my journal um, because I think that's um, kind of an interesting thing to do. Keep your journal and, you know, in a year or so, you look back over your journal and it's, it's kind of a reflection of your spiritual journey. You can see how much you've grown to be like Jesus over the year. So I like to keep my journals. Okay, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to draw a line separating the top from the bottom and we're going to ask ourselves two questions the first question we're going to put on the top and that is what made me happy today what made me happy okay there you go now on the bottom we're going to say what made me sad and we're going to do this every day okay so what made me sad? Okay, here you go. Now this may seem like a simple thing, but trust me friends, this is a powerful tool for helping us reflect on our life with Jesus. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna wake up in the morning, we're gonna ask God to, to help us walk with Jesus um, this day. And then at the end of the day, before we go to sleep at night, we're gonna ask ourselves these two questions. So the first question is, what made me happy today? Well, I'm not finished with my day yet, but I already know one thing that made me really happy. So I'm going to go ahead and write it in this journal now. And that is that the roads are still a little bit icy today. And Mr. Woody drove me to work and helped me carry all my stuff in. That made me really happy. So I'm going to write that in my journal. I'm going to say, Woody, Woody's Drive is what I'll call it. Woody's drive to work. Okay, that made me very happy. Now, I'm also going to ask myself another question. What made me sad today? Well, so far, nothing has made me sad. But at the end of the day, I'm going to write what made me sad today. And then I'm going to stop and think about these two things. You know, God wants us to fill our lives with things that bring us joy. You know, sometimes grown ups, you'll hear grown ups say things that bring life, that bring me joy, that feed my spirit. God wants us to spend time doing those. Now, God does not want us to fill our days with things that make us sad. And you know, sometimes I've noticed, because I've been doing this a while, that most of the time the things that make me sad are the things that I do, like you know, getting angry at my dog for chewing up the faucet covers that Mr. Woody put outside to keep our pipes from freezing. Ooh, that makes me so angry. It really does because um, they're running out of those things at Walmart and we needed them. And that Libby just went out there and just took it off and she thought it was a toy. So anyway, I got mad at her. And Libby was just thinking, hey, this is a fun toy. I'm going to play with this new toy. She wasn't trying to do anything wrong. And so I really overreacted. And I'm sorry about that. That made me sad. So when I think about these things, this is an opportunity now for me to pray. I can say, thank you, God, so much for giving me uh, Woody as a husband who cares about me and um, takes care of our family and does nice things like driving me to work. So that's one part of my prayer. The other part of my prayer is, Lord, I'm so sorry that I was mean to Libby. Um, she didn't know what she was doing, and I'm sorry. Please give me the patience I need to be the dog mom that she needs me to be to teach her the right things to do. And then I say, Amen, and I go to sleep, and my heart feels at rest. This is the way I am going to spend my Lenten season, those 40 days in reflection, thinking about my life with the intention of growing closer and closer to God and being more and more like God's Son, Jesus Christ. 
And that's what Lent is all about, friends. So make yourself a journal, or if you already have one, you know, start using it. Um, journals are awesome. You can use markers and uh, colors, crayons, uh, those colored pencils, whatever you'd like. Sometimes I even like to cut out pictures in magazines, but ask your mom first before you do that. And then uh, paste them in my journal, uh, just pictures of things that make me happy. Um, and then spend some time with your journal in reflection with God. And God will show you some important things um, about yourself and about his love for you. So friends, um, this week, remember how much I love you. And I hope to see you in big church. Pastor Mike has a wonderful sermon for us today on temptation. Ooh, that's something we all struggle with. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your love for us, for all of the teachers that you've planted in our lives that have taught us so many wonderful things like prayer journals and all kinds of important stuff that help us to grow and be more like you. Father, watch over us these 40 days. Give us um, a sense of courage that we can be honest with ourselves about who we are before you so that we can become more like Jesus. For this is your will for us, and Lord, that is our heart's desire too. God bless all of these children and their families. Keep us warm and safe, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, I will see y'all next week. Remember to keep up your journals. And if you forget one day, no problem. Just pick up the next day. Okay, I want to hear all about it. I'll talk to you soon. Bye, friends.